Hey there, everybody. We are here in the Cave of Bad Ideas, and it is hovering around freezing. That is why I'm kind of bundled up. But today I'm going to test out some interesting technology from a company called My Velofit. My Velofit was started by two people. They're based in Canada. One of them is a bike trainer. And as far as I understand it, they started developing this tool during COVID because he couldn't see clients and he needed a way to help kind of evaluate their fit remotely. Hence, my VeloFit, which I think is absolutely brilliant. To make this happen, you will need to be able to set up your bike in a stationary position, as well as record yourself riding said bike. You can use your phone, or if you have a camera, you can also use that as well. I'll get into a little bit more of the technical details that I've discovered uh, playing around with my VeloFit. Presumably you want to do fit because you want to ride the bike on the road. So definitely make sure that your wheels are level. I've got a Wahoo Kicker trainer here and I've noticed when I put the bike on the trainer, it doesn't have the wheels level, even fudging with the rear height adjustment. What I found was the height difference was about three centimeters. So it happens I had some plywood that was about three centimeters. So I just made a little sled, glued these two pieces together, and then I strapped it to the front wheel and then you rotate it downward so the bike is nice and level. And the way I measured that is uh, making sure that the, the height from the quick release to the ground was the same on both wheels. Today I'm gonna to be using my phone, so I've got this kind of phone holder set up on a tripod. You wanna make sure it's angled perfectly up and down so it's not tilting uh, to the side this way or this way, because that's gonna skew the angles of the video and the software won't be able to do its magic accurately. I think that's most of it in terms of setting it up. You know, you wanna have a good line of sight uh, of your body when you're filming, have a good light source, you know, get a big uh, get a big soft box if you can. Just kidding. Make sure your wheels are level and also have a computer handy. Because the way this is ultimately gonna work is you're gonna take your footage, then upload it to their servers via the website, and then it'll do all the computational crunching and then spit out some recommendations. With all that said, let's shoot some footage and see what my VeloFit thinks of my fit so far on the rib. Okay, so I've got the phone in video mode. I'm gonna put it in the, the clamp here. So let's see how I do. I'm here at the computer. I've got my footage here on the phone. Now I'm gonna send the video clip to my computer via AirDrop. So the next step is you have to create an account on my Velofit. There are three different plans. Basically the big difference between each plan is the number of times you can do a fit and on the number of bikes. The pro plan is the most flexible, allowing you to do multiple fits and multiple bikes. If you're a Patreon supporter, you get 30% off the enthusiast and the pro plan. After creating the plan, you create a profile. They have you do a mobility test. You can either do it via questionnaire or film yourself some more uh, doing various stretches and it'll rate your mobility. After that, you set up a fit session, put in some bike details, and then upload the video. If you're an Apple user, your phone will create an MOV file. And I found when trying to upload an MOV file, it doesn't see it. It doesn't like it. I've got the video clip in Final Cut. I put it in a timeline. I'm exporting it as an MP4. And another pro tip is to save the file in a smaller resolution. So something like 854 by 480, 1280 by 720, definitely not 4K. Their, their servers and all the computer magic has to analyze the footage. And the larger the file, the longer you're gonna have to wait. Trust me. Next thing I'm gonna do is hit the new session button. Uh, this is where you can put details about the session. So let's say fit for YouTube. Um, then you have an option of fit goal. Do you want it performance or comfort or somewhere in between? So for bike make, I'm typing Riv, bike model, uh, Hillborn, and bike type, I'm hitting road. You'll notice that there are some options here, road, mountain, tri, hybrid, time trial, spin, slash exercise bike. Uh, they are working on a gravel bike profile, so that'll be interesting to see. And at the bottom, you'll notice this little icon here uh, with some dot. This gives you kind of a big picture view of the fit that it's gonna to try to achieve. If I switch it to performance, look how the dots change. So a little bit more a little bit more aggressive, slightly more forward, a little bit further out. Let's go to the extreme side of comfort, the party pace side. Uh, and that's what it's gonna do. So I'm gonna hit save. Now it's querying me for uploading first video. So that's what we'll do, upload first video. So let's select the file. I'm gonna hit analyze and hit start on the timer. So analyze, start, and yeah, you can see there's kind of a, a weird status bar here that's that's blinking. 
and it's doing its magic. So I've, I tested this a couple times with a 1080 clip and it took in excess of like 10, 12 minutes. So you definitely want to, you know, upload a smaller file if you can. You like waiting, in which case, you know, upload as big of a file as you want. You can see it's, the transfer has happened, all pipeline set up and it's gonna go through these, these uh, little checkpoints here and then it'll spit out some information. So while this is processing, let's talk about some of the limitations and their intent for creating my VeloFit. First off, they fully recognize that this isn't meant to compete with a three hour you know, professional fit session. In talking with them, they've realized that for many people, people that are doing their first bike fit, that they can be grossly off. And this is a tool to address that and get people within a range. So when they do see a professional bike fitter, they're already starting off from a good place rather than having things completely out of whack. Obviously it's only analyzing you from the profile. So if you have a weird uh, knee wobble on you know the leg that's not facing the camera, it's not gonna it's not gonna detect that. It's not shooting you from the front or the back, so it can't really ID hip wobble either. So it has limitations, but still I think this is still a good tool. Or let's say you've got a fit you like, you can run it through the analysis tools and transfer that fit from different bikes that you may own. So we're about three and a half minutes. It's uh, preparing the results. Another thing they said in talking with them is that they do offer this as kind of a B2B tool. So if you are a bike fitter and want to fit remotely, this is a tool that you could use. I don't think their goal is to undermine bike fitters around the world, but it's to get people in the ballpark of a good fit range, as well as providing tools for fitters. I mean, we're still in COVID. Maybe you're a fitter and you have clients that don't want to come in Maybe they're immunocompromised. Oh, just finished. Stopping at 4.15, it finished. So it's recommending a lot of changes. The first one is to lower my saddle by uh, 10 millimeters, move my saddle forward by five millimeters. I do feel a little bit stretched out in this position. I got my handlebar height right, so that's good. And again, it does say reduce the handlebar reach from the bottom bracket by 10 mil. It also says uh, since my saddle height and my fore and aft are off, Make sure they're correct before dealing things with handlebar height and stem length. And I found this to be true. Typically, when I've gone in to get fit, they want to get these. They want to get the saddle position right first, and everything becomes relative to that kind of Cartesian coordinate. Let's look at the magic here. Okay, so it's giving me some stills from my fitting, and you can see uh, there are these colored bars. So you want to be in the green again. That's we're looking for a good working range, not necessarily the most perfect pinpoint, but get within a good range. Looking here, bottom of the uh, pedal stroke, it's supposed to be within 41 to 45 degrees. What does the little question mark say? Uh, knee extension refers to the angle of the knee at the bottom of the pedal stroke. Higher knee extension refers to a more closed knee, lower angle ref refers to a more open knee. Having too low of an, uh, an extension number below 30, would mean, your, would mean your saddle is likely too high. Alternately, having too high of an extension number uh, above 45 degrees means that your saddle is too low. So that makes sense uh, on the lower side. So that means I should lower the saddle. There's this button here, expert review, what does that do? Okay, our expert Jesse will review your fit videos and give you personalized advice for an additional $75, which I'm not gonna do today. Uh, what else is there? Front of pedal stroke. Everything looks pretty good within range, shoulder angle. So what does this say? So a higher shoulder angle, uh, more stretched out. I'm at 81, I should be between 73 to 79. So too stretched out, at least for uh, the comfort fit. And down here, cool. So there's on the left is me obviously, and on the right are the points that they're tracking, which is kind of cool. Okay, so enough messing around. Um, I changed my shoes to shoes that I would actually ride in. I was doing this whole thing in loafers and I'm gonna try to get a fit for the trainer for the rest of the winter riding season. I've also changed into bike shorts. I was trying to avoid doing this just because it's in the thirties here. It's really cold right now, but I want to give the server software analysis the best possible a chance it can do to, to, to get a good fit. We'll see if it places a dot anywhere differently and what changes it would recommend. Again, I'm going for that performance comfort fit. The only change in this iteration is that I am now kitted up. Second time bibbed up. 
Take three. Four. Five. Six and last one. All right, it's uh, 5 p.m., almost dinner time. I've been in the cave down here for at least about two hours messing around with my VeloFit. I've been trying to dial like a real actual fit for me on the trainer. And I did about six iterations of filming, then uploading, looking at its suggested changes and making incremental changes along the way. And it's this game of raising and lowering this, the saddle just right. In terms of how the fit feels, I feel like it's it's landed me in a pretty good place. It's uh, actually fairly close to the, the fit I had with Annalisa. Probably a centimeter and a half shorter on the saddle height and about the same in terms of the reach. I think I'll ride in this position on the trainer for the next two weeks or, or so and, and see what I think of it. Looking back at the experience and really thinking about who this is for, I know initially I said that this would be perfect for the for an absolute beginner. I do still believe that, but with a caveat. There are a couple of bits of instruction that I think my VeloFit um, has, has left out or doesn't communicate very well, being someone that has done fits in the past. First off, this may seem obvious, but you do want to kind of warm up. And I made this mistake in the very beginning uh, pedaling for 30 seconds and just using that first recorded footage. In this latest run, I'd pedal for about two to five minutes and then and then pick a 20 second chunk somewhere in between. So it was kind of representative of at least sitting on the bike for a while. So there was no real communication of warm up and giving yourself some time to sell, settle into the position before you know calling it done. And you would only know that if you'd had a fit in the past. If, if you've had no fit at all, you'd probably just figure I'm gonna pedal for 30 seconds and that's it, good to go. Another thing that wasn't really made clear is you know whether I should be putting my hands in the drops or on the hoods. For me, since I ride mostly in the hoods, you know that's where I put my hands and that's where I think the, the fit tries to optimize for. But again, if you're a complete beginner and don't know, it'd be good to have some language about, you know, do you, you know, hoods or drops. Another another thing which wasn't communicated super clear was you know you get a list of recommended changes and they do do this in the bottom i feel like they should move it up and it would be you know get your your saddle height first then fudge with the fore and aft and then deal with the other stuff so being a little bit more clear about you know which which variables to change and which ones to uh, prioritize. It's kind of hard to see what's throwing what off if you do all the recommended changes all at once. So this last iteration, I definitely worked the height until I went too far and it told me to go down. And then after that, I started playing with the, the fore and aft. I would kind of, I would recommend that as well. Let's see other notes. You know, clearly there's limitations. Like I mentioned, it doesn't deal with cleat position. You know, I'm not clipped in, so I'm kind of a, a wild card uh, for the software in this instance. Doesn't recommend anything about saddle tilt. Doesn't rec it doesn't do anything about hood placement, and it doesn't look like and it doesn't look like it looks at wrist angle, which to me is really important because you know I suffer from carpal tunnel, and if there's anything I learned from my last in-person fit, my wrists have to avoid specific angles. It would be good to see that stuff integrated in the future. Feature. Again, small company, just started. So I think for how long they've been around and what they're attempting to do, I think it does a pretty good job. In my opinion, if you're an absolute beginner that's never done a fit before, then I would probably steer you away from this just because you do need kind of that added background and, and, and understand you know, what it is a fitter is looking for. If you're an advanced beginner, beginner intermediate that's had you know at least one fit then i think you have more of that working background knowledge of how to interpret the data because it does attempt to explain things in plain english but again having that experience in multiple fits uh, will make all the numbers and the graphs and the angles make a little bit more sense i think to get the absolute most out of this you'd have to share the video files and the data with an actual fitter and they can kind of troubleshoot and say hey that looks about right or no it put that dot in a weird place I think overall, it's a pretty good product right now. It, it still feels like it could use a little bit more refinement, a little bit more clarification in the instructions. In terms of having a minimum viable product, if you know what you're doing, I think you can arrive uh, to at least a, a pretty good fit with my VeloFit. Is it gonna be the best, most perfect fit ever? Probably not. Is it going to steer you away from the extremes where you could experience injury? I think it would do a good job at that. If you're interested in trying out my VeloFit, there are links below. There are affiliate links. So if you sign up, you know, we get some change for the channel. 
If you're a Patreon supporter, you've got a discount code for 30% off the Enthusiast and Pro Plan. Uh, what do you guys think of my Velofit? Is it something you want to check out? Let me know in the comments below if you found this video helpful or entertaining. Consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon or buying some merch, some, some bronze stem caps from our web store. And as always, keep the supple side down.